President Joko Widodo started a working visit on Monday, the 25th of July 2022, to meet with leaders from the three destination countries of China, Japan and South Korea. In Beijing, the bilateral meeting between Jokowi and Chinese President Xi Jinping on Tuesday, the 26th of July 2022, afternoon, seven agreements were born between Indonesia and China. Namely the renewal of the Memorandum of Understanding for the Synergy of the World Maritime Axis and the Belt Road Initiative. Furthermore, Indonesia-China also agreed related to 1. Mo Yu on vaccine and genomics development and research cooperation, 2. Mo Yu on green development, 3. Maritime cooperation arrangements, 4. Protocol on Indonesian pineapple exports, 5. Information Exchange Cooperation Arrangements, 6. Customs Violation Enforcement, 7. Action Plan for Cybersecurity and Technology Capacity Development Cooperation. In addition, there is also a commitment to complete the Jakarta-Bandung high-speed train on schedule as a flagship project. In addition to meeting Xi, Jokowi also took the time to discuss with Premier Li Keqiang. During the meeting, China expressed a commitment to increase imports of crude palm oil by 1 million tons and would prioritize imports of agricultural products from Indonesia. In Tokyo, Japan, Wednesday, the 27th of July 2022, Jokowi's meeting with Japanese Prime Minister Kishida Fumio agreed to strengthen cooperation in trade and investment between the two countries. It is agreed that the IJEPA amendment protocol can be finalized and signed at the G20 summit in Bali next November. In particular, Jokowi asked Japan to provide support for reducing tariffs for several products, including tuna, bananas and pineapples as well as market access for mango products. Some of the strategic projects that I conveyed to accelerate their completion include MRT Jakarta North-South Phase 2 and East-West Phase 1. West Papua Industrial Estate, expansion of the Patimban Port and Patimban Access Toll Road. And also discussed cooperation commitments for the continuation of the gas project Masela. President Jokowi also encouraged the support of new Japanese science and technology to support several strategic projects in Indonesia, especially for the downstreaming of natural commodities, the development of electric cars and motorcycles, as well as the health and food sector. In fact, he specifically also invited Japan to support the acceleration of achieving Indonesia's net zero emission target through advocating for innovative technologies such as hydrogen and ammonia technology. Jokowi also offered more intensive cooperation for sending Indonesian workers to Japan. The president hopes for Japan's support in preparing workers who will work in Japan. In Japan, Jokowi and Iriana also paid a courtesy call to Japan's Emperor Naruhito and Empress Masako at the Imperial Palace of Japan, Tokyo. In South Korea on Thursday, 28 July 2022, Jokowi and President Yoon made a number of bilateral agreements on bilateral trade trends. Starting from agreeing to continue to open market access, overcome trade barriers, and promote superior products from the two countries. Jokowi also encourages the concrete implementation of the Indonesia-Korea Economic Partnership Agreement to encourage the fulfillment of these various targets. In the investment sector, Jokowi said that South Korean investment in Indonesia is also experiencing rapid growth and good prospects. Especially in several fields including the steel industry, petrochemicals, electric vehicle batteries, electric cable and telecommunications industries, as well as garments and renewable energy. In particular, Jokowi encourages investment cooperation from Korea, especially in the field of accelerating the development of the electric car ecosystem in Indonesia, including the battery industry project integrated with mining and the automotive steel industry for electric vehicles. On this occasion, President Jokowi also welcomed South Korea's investment in the development of the Indonesian capital including cooperation in the development of the drinking water supply system, and capacity building in the field of smart city development. President Jokowi welcomed the signing of the Mo Yu between the Ministry of Investment with POSCO Korea and Krakatoa Steel Indonesia regarding investment in the automotive steel industry for electric vehicles.
and participation in the development of the Indonesian capital city with a total investment value of 6.37 billion United States dollars and will absorb more than 58,000 labor. The Citilink aircraft on the Surabaya Makassar route made an emergency landing at Wanda Airport, Saido Arjo, East Java, the 21st of July 2022, morning. The emergency landing was made because the pilot in charge of the flight was in a health emergency while flying. The 171 people who were passengers on the flight had to return to the departure airport and were only able to land at their destination a few hours ahead of the expected schedule. Chronology of the Citilink aircraft with flight number QG307 taking off from Wanda International Airport to Makassar Sultan Hassanuddin Airport on Thursday, 21 July 2022, at 6.10 local time. The flight was led by Captain Awalia, 48, and carried 171 passengers. Not long ago in the air, the pilot was reported to be in an emergency condition and was in a state of illness so he had to make an emergency landing. An emergency landing was also made at the airport of origin, 46 minutes after takeoff, at 6.56 WIB to be exact. The pilot was in critical condition when the officers evacuated him. The pilot was immediately taken to the hospital, but after being examined by a doctor, Captain Awalia was declared dead. Corporal M, a soldier from the Indonesian National Army, who is suspected of being the mastermind behind the shooting of his own wife in Banyumanik, Semarang City, Central Java, is on the wanted list. So far, the police have arrested five suspects. The police also arrested a woman with the initials W who was an affair with Corporal M. Five suspects claim to have received a salary of RP, 120 million for shooting dead Corporal M's wife. The shooting took place last Monday. The 18th of July 2022, in a housing estate, Semarang City, Java. Middle. At around 20.00 local time, it was discovered that Corporal M had fled. Corporal M is known to have died at his parents' house in Kendall Regency, the 28th of July 2022. The death of Corporal M ended his flight for several days because he was suspected of being the mastermind behind the shooting of Rina Wulandari, his own wife. Corporal MS autopsy results found no injuries from physical violence, either sharp or blunt objects, Corporal M died allegedly due to poisoning. The latest finding in the case of Corporal M has found a referee's letter in the pocket of the last used pants which was written by Corporal MS own hand, the contents of which were intended for his children, the 1st of August 2022. Meanwhile, Rina Wulandari, wife of Corporal M, the 3rd of August 2022, will move from the ICU, intensive care unit, to a regular room because his condition has started to improve. 